Welcome back to a special bonus episode of Starving Artists. My name is LJ Jones, and uh, with me uh, on the podcast for the second time, Young One Jonah. Already. Appreciate it, man. Absolutely. And welcome I mean, for the first time, my guy, Tremonte. How you doing, bro? What's good, man? What's good? Thankful to welcome. be here, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Man. Welcome to the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the, like I said, this is a special this is a special episode, um, and I really wanted to have you guys on here to talk about everything that's that's going on in the world, everything that's been going on in the world. Um, you know, I just want to have these these hard conversations, and um, and uh, you know, see where you guys are at, what you guys are thinking, and um, see what's on your heart. Why, well, Jay? You want to go? But so uh, what's been on my heart lately, man, is uh, first of all, I want to say this. I've been really uh, happy about what I've been seeing from some of uh, my uh, white allies and what's been going on in the country, man. I, I've been real uh, pleased to see um, um, even those who on other issues, let's say like uh, um, um, the Philand- uh, Philandro Castile, you know, issue or, or the Sandra Bland thing or, you know, all these times I saw certain people standing on the wrong side of history. And now I'm seeing these very people changing their views and their opinions now. And they, the winning team. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I know I'm saying it lightly. But it really, I'm really proud. I'm really proud of, of, of our white allies standing, you know what I'm saying, alongside us. What I'm not pleased with is the ones who's getting extra crunk. And I know it's because I was outside at a protest and I saw some white guys getting extra crunk trying to do too much and people had to stop them. Um, so, the, you know, and that goes towards the rioting and there's only black people doing that, you know. But if y'all want to go to war, we can do that. Um, it's been a crazy <laughs> time, man, and um, I'm, I'm dead serious about that, by the way. But uh, yeah, it's been a crazy time, man, and um, I'm just happy to see that you know people uniting over this, and uh, hopefully this time we can move forward um together as well, and don't let it die uh, after justice is served. I'll say, I'll say. At least in in recent recollection, this time feels kind of different. As far as I can tell, you know, if I'm wrong, please tell me. Um, it just seems as if a lot more of, um, I guess, the society is is paying attention, being willing to have these hard conversations. Would you guys agree? Yeah. Willing to have the hard conversations? Some yeah, like p- certain people are starting to, like you said, man, certain people are starting to listen uh, when they weren't open to it before. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Uh, you know what's funny? You know what's funny? I was just talking to one of my homeboys. Uh, shout out to Israel. I was just talking to him about this today. I believe that certain people who are now ready to hear or have these conversations now, um, they just got fatigued. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. They, they've seen so many events absolutely undeniable and it's dumb yeah. to stand on the side that they were on now. You know what I mean? Right. So they, they, they had no choice but to pivot. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'll say um, a conversation that I keep having with people uh, is the Black Lives Matter versus All Lives Matter debacle. Mm-hmm. Um, I I posted, I think it was yesterday, um, I'm trying to remember exactly how I said, you know, let me, let me pull it up. I want to make sure I, I say it, say it correct. Um, but I'll say that I, I, I posted a video online um, and talking about 
about it, talking about how, um, you know, Black Lives Matter does not mean other lives don't. It means, uh, you know, it's like we do too type thing. And um, got a lot of hate for it. And, uh, you know, just been in, in, in the comment sections trying to have these conversations. Some people are willing to listen, some people aren't. Um, and um, it just it's a conversation that I'm, I'm, I just can't believe that people aren't listening to. But what I posted on Facebook was, if you truly believe that all lives matter, you wouldn't view Black Lives Matter as a statement that needs correcting. And, and that, and grass, my mind can't get the, the, oh, we lost Tremonte. So basically what I posted on Facebook the other day was, if you truly believed all lives matter, you wouldn't view Black Lives Matter as a statement that needs correcting. I want to ask you guys what your opinion is on that debate. Shouldn't be a debate, but what, what, what do you guys um, say about that, Tremonte? Uh, <laughs> I don't think all lives matter versus Black Lives Matter should be a real, it's not a real thing. Um, because it, it's inclusionary of us in All Lives Matter. We're just being, for some reason, throughout our history, we've been excluded. So whenever there's a, a group of people who aren't being treated like everyone else on that, um, if it were Black people um, who were the privileged people <laughs> and the white people in the press, and the white people were like, white lives matter, it would be crazy of us to be like, no, all lives matter if the roles were reversed. I think because of our, um, our history as black people, how we've been treated, how we're the you know, victims of a system that you know, works against us for the most part, it's hard to grown up privileged and grown up conditioned to believe that People saying all lives matter kind of come from the premise that things are equal. Like we have opportunity. Like um, we're afforded the same, we're afforded the same privileges and opportunities and resources as they are. But it's just not true. Even even if you look at rich black ath black athletes or rich entertainers, there's still like a ceiling. Uh, we don't we don't own anything as far as the system goes. We own restaurants, but we own restaurants in an ecosystem that's predominantly owned by white people. Um, all the NFL owners are white. All the NBA owners are white, except for Michael Jordan. <laughs> all the MLB, NHL, educational laws are written by, by white people. Institutional laws are written by white people. Everything's everywhere you turn. Automobile industry, it's owned by white people. So it's almost like a miracle for us to even make a decent living or to get to a certain space when everything, everywhere we turn, I know for a fact I've been turned down jobs because of my name, because of my skin color. That doesn't happen to white people, really. I, I have the benefit of nepotism because a lot of my peers are in the same position I, I am. You know, it's not, it's not uh, I don't think it would begrudge me to say that. <laughs> Jonah could probably attest to this. Most of the places I work, supervisors and managers mostly been white. It's not by, it's not coincidence, it's by design. and. Whenever I hear the debate of all lives matter versus black lives matter, I don't think it's a real thing. I think that's just people simply being in denial. And I applaud you for standing out and, and speaking up against that. Because you don't, you don't have to do that. That's something that you're taking on on a stand by our side. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But, you know, I'm just, it's, it's, it's just important. It's, 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 it's not a thing, man. It's, um, it just needs to be done. And, uh, I hope I hope that with this, so maybe we can open some open some uh, some some eyes to uh, uh, who who otherwise wouldn't be open to listen before. Why why um, would you why are you what gives you as a white man? What sparks that thing inside of you to want to stand on our side? Because there are people who are who look like you that don't stand on our side. Man, I. My whole life is just, I, I was raised to just see everybody equal. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, 
I like I, I look at you guys and I just I, I see my brothers. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I don't I, I, I don't see I wanna say it the right way. Um but basically, you know, I just I don't nothing mm-hmm. I um have seen a lot of black friends be discriminated against and it just breaks my Mm -hmm. heart like for for no reason um there was somebody that that we all know um i'll just leave their name out of it because i don't know Mm -hmm. uh how open they are about um but there's somebody that we know uh years ago um was leaving the movie theater and um cops grabbed him and um detained him and said that he fit the image of somebody uh, that they were after. Um, and uh, this guy that we that, that we know, he had long dreads and um, the guy there had a shaved head. And um, the, the guy that we know was lighter skinned and darker skinned and, and, and no world does he fit the image of who they were looking for. Mm-hmm. And it's just things like, things like that um, that just break my heart want to do whatever I can do to to help you know what I mean that's real yeah man I, I don't know uh, it's a this is a, a we're like in a crisis man man yeah. I've never I agree with you what you said initially I think this does feel different than it has in previous years I'm kind of anxious and Jonah you could take it from here I'm kind of anxious the CB pass, because there's a lot of stuff going on at one time with COVID, with coming election, with people being out of jobs. There's a lot of stuff going on at one time. I just want to see what's actually going to happen as far as change. We all know that change takes years and years uh, to actually uh, be implemented, but what do y'all think is going to happen or what's going to come from what's been going on in the past, the past couple of weeks, just to be specific? Yeah. Also, oh, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Now, I would say that one thing um, that has, has has caught my eye is you know it started out as as you know George Floyd, and I think the media is trying to take it take away from what the protest started as, and um, they're 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 slamming the riots and all. Of that, that is what do you expect is going to happen? Mm-hmm. Kaepernick peacefully protested. He took a knee. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They were peacefully populous and they were hit with tear bombs. So, what do you expect to happen is, is met with violence. Um, so, mm-hmm. I think the, the riots have to happen. Um, and I think that the media is just trying to uh, paint that as negatively as they possibly can um, to disrupt, dis- disrupt what this, but I do feel like, like I said, that something feels different. I, I don't know what, what laws will come into place. Um, you know, I'll say one of the things different about this time is all the officers have been arrested. Um, they're being charged. Tra- Charge yeah. added uh, for for Chauvin. They, they they changed it to second degree, um, and then they arrested the other officers. Um, in the past, that that hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. You're right. But in the past, or if it did happen, they got like sentence uh, convicted. That's true. Um, this this is this is what really throws me. Like this is why I'm not as optimistic as others. I don't believe it till I see it. Let me see that conviction. Let me get that conviction before I even celebrate. Think about uh, you know what I'm saying, putting down the strap and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, because to keep it 100, man, like anything about change, man. Any change that's ever been made has not came without bloodshed. That's true. And I don't want to say it's like in a militant way, but uh, to keep it 100, man, man, shit under the rug. 
it will be met with bloodshed sooner than later. Um, we got to be realistic. Tremonte said it's a lot going on at one time, and that's absolute fact. Got COVID going on. Got people that's out of work. We got a food shortage. Do you guys remember yeah. that? It's a food yeah. shortage. Um, what happens when people can't eat? They're going to take from whoever got it. Yeah. And it don't matter what color you are at that point. Mm -hmm. you know? So uh, it's, it's, it's so much more to think about. So going forward, the powers that be, whatever's going, you know what I'm saying? The, whoever's uh, uh, pulling this, but this has to go perfectly for this country not to go to shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, I firmly believe that uh, that change can come and it can happen, but it, I believe it won't come without discomfort. Mm -hmm. And that's not just it's just crisis, but it's going to be discomfort for some of us as well. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it's a given hope. I'm interested to see how it all plays out. Um, I'm just not as optimistic as, you know, a lot of my brothers out here. So I, in the past, there's been um, a lot of the major change that's that's happened um, with, you know, Martin Luther King after he was gunned down. Uh, there were riots across the country. Um, he was a peaceful and, man. Yeah, yeah. He was a peaceful man, right? He was met with violence. Met with violence. Huh. And, um, and the... To, did the riots not invoke change six days later? Mm. Huh. Mm -hmm. You right. I'm not misinformed on that, am I? No, you're not misinformed. <laughs> you're not misinformed. <laughs> uh, it just seems, you know, like we're headed in that direction that, that, that you know, when change has happened in the past, and I hope that we keep headed uh, in that direction. Same thing um, for, you know, the LGBT community. Uh, protests riots and change happen um and and so i just i really hope that we what do you guys think needs to be done at this moment in time to um to to just spark that change i think people should keep raising awareness of what's going on um i'm not not sure if Lloyd video wasn't filmed, we would be in this position. That's unfortunate to say. Because we've had plenty of George Floyds in the past that have been on camera and none of it has not been uh this contentious um in the past. So I'm not even sure if someone didn't have the courage to record them. Although me being from where I'm from, I would have helped them. <laughs> but uh just sticking with the facts. If there wasn't somebody to record them, we wouldn't be in this position even having this conversation. The federal government is not on the same page as we can see. So I don't I don't foresee any time soon any laws passing. Uh, we have a disgraceful president try to that's as positive as I can be, John. Uh, we have a disgraceful <laughs> president. Uh, who doesn't care about black people, doesn't really care about anybody but there himself. It's peak in the past few days. He he retreated. He retreated, and that's a cowardly move uh, for someone who's supposed to be in charge of the free world. Uh, I think the power is in the hands of the people. Now. I think that's clear. I don't mean that um, we can write laws. I don't mean that we can we can invoke change. If, they will listen. They won't have a choice to listen. As Jonah said, they get fatigued. When you keep doing something, it's the other person. It's like a war of attrition. The other yeah. person gets worn down. And eventually, like, okay, okay, okay. Now, now, what do you want? Okay, now we're now here. Should they have taken this long? Hell no. Shouldn't have taken this long. Uh, but we, people like you, LJ, white people, people like YJ, uh, I think everybody has a role to play. I'm not to put anybody down. If you're on social media and you're screaming at the top of your lungs, typing in all caps, saying it's fucked up, keep saying, keep doing that. If you're on the front lines and you're rioting and you're testing, keep doing that. Um, 
if you're a lawyer, if you're a professor, if you're in youth, whatever power you have, whatever resource you have, keep calling out the people who are who should have a bigger responsibility um, to um, influence our country in a positive manner. And um, I think that's all we can now. Um, once again, as Jonah mentioned, there are other press needs. I'm not going to weigh which one's more important, but when people, when you don't have food on your table as a family, you have kids, or LJ, you have kids, and you're, you're furloughed or you're out of work, um, and you don't know where your next move is going to come from, all that stuff. To be honest with you, man, politics or anything political is going to be the last thing on your mind. Um, social unrest is important. Political unrest is important. You have to make sure that you can, that you're able, that you're able to function to be in the fight with us. Uh, because if you're if you're not, uh, that's 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 a battle that we've lost. You know, before we even uh, step on the battlefield, so we got to make sure that and uh, <laughs> that we're ready for war if it does come to that. You know, we got to. Um... Uh, stop giving attention to the trivial things like mm. uh, the Black Lives Matter. That's a fucking distraction. Mm -hmm. I, I hate conversations online or those debates online. Why debate that shit? You know what I mean? Right. Fuck them. Like completely fuck them. You know, what I mean? more pressing real shit to deal with. Mm -hmm. the, the issue at hand isn't BL all lives. That's not the issue. You know what I'm saying? We're not. It's not two gangs in the street going at it. Clearly, that kind of smoke isn't wanted. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we got to stop debating the trivial things. That uh, amongst um, this, this is one thing I, I hate to hear going forward because we're not. This is not going to be the last case of police brutality, no. man. There's been how, how many more after this yeah. already? Been like, a uh, been a couple. Is is I've seen I've seen like three or four. Um, the shit is disgusting. So it's it's not gonna it's not gonna end. Um, at least not immediately. Um, so with that being said, the debates with um, compliance that shit got to end too. We gotta go straight to the. We just gotta go straight to the ballots. We gotta go straight to our communities. You know what I'm saying? And, and move as a unit. Local government. We gotta uh, everything everything that we want to see. Uh, being done, we got to do it first and consistently do that within our lives so the people around us can see it and make that shit cool. Um, we can't make laziness cool. We got to be active. You know what I'm saying? We got to be out. You know what I'm saying? And we, we, we make that and, you know, uh, a consistent theme in our lives. Um, then we can see some 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 real change. Mm -hmm. um, and especially getting out there to the ballots and stuff like that so we can make some uh, changes to the system that holds us in chains. Um, so, so things for it to see it happen, um, you know, to, to actually affect change in this country, man. We all live here. We stuck here, man. I can't go back to Africa. I don't know who the, who the fuck I know over there. Who the fuck I know over there. You know what I'm saying? I don't know goddamn soul over there, bro. You know, this is my home. And as long as I'm here, uh, my neighbors better get comfortable because I'm comfortable with a motherfucker. <laughs> mm. LJ, what you think? I think, I mean, I think y'all are right. I don't know that, um, I don't think that change is, is, is come uh, immediately and it's going to take time. Um, I think, I think um, so it's the local, local government, uh, like, you know, live in there. We have, a, we have a trash president, uh, and I could go on and on about that. Uh, Y'all both know. Um, and uh, I miss of of just of of just grace in the in the in the office. Yeah. You know what I mean, um, just imagine how Obama would be, or yeah, how he is responding to this. But then we have Trump. Um, Getting, you know, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Mm -hmm. What good does that? What good does that do? Uh, hey, that's, hey, that's another thing too, man. Um, and I don't mean to sound disrespectful when I say this, but I ain't never been the big 
because uh, my nigga had a lot of swag. Shout out, shout out to him. Uh, but that's about it. Um, the looks, right? The uh, Trump is brash. He is, he is, you know, first thing coming to his mind, he's going to say that shit. He don't care about, like, how he looks, you know, as far as appearance is concerned. Obama is buttoned up. That 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 uh, pit, you know, a uh, upstanding, you know, person, a uh, a uh, uh, a good man. Here's the thing about looks. Mm-hmm. So if we, I, I don't want to even get on Trump too much about how you know what I'm saying about how he comes across, or you know what I'm saying, even how brash he is at times. Like I, I think some of that shit is necessary at times. Because you got to have a backbone, especially when you're a leader. Um, but I will say this, he ain't the one to do it because he's not competent enough. You know, uh, I, I hope that we get someone in the office that has that look that everybody's comfortable with, that Obama had everybody enamored with, but actually do some shit and is stern enough to hold his own, hold his nuts on whatever it is that he believes in, and hopefully it's a righteous cause. You know what I mean? That whole appearance thing and shit, mm-hmm. that, is a, that, is, that is the deadliest trap of America right now, man. That is, we, we in a situation, you know what I'm saying, of, of perception, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many different sides to what one video. We can see one video and have 30 different opinions come out of that bitch. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's the trap of perception, man. And hopefully we can um, get somebody to lead us as right. You know what I'm saying? What can what can whoever can or should they do from the White House to to spark that change? What we can do, but what can the White House do? Well, the first thing that new president that we have, they have to speak. This probably won't happen, but I'm just in my utopian mind. They have to speak against the system, man. The system is doesn't work. The system doesn't work. I'm a capitalist. I, 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 I rather you know what I mean, to be honest with you. Uh, but for the majority of, of Americans um, who are poor, the majority of Americans, the system is not beneficial. And when you keep having, as Jonah said, Somebody keeps fitting the perception. I'm not big on perception because perception ain't reality. Now, I know it can be perceived as reality, um, but uh, there are people who, dare I say, some people think Trump is doing a great job. That's why you voted. That's how he got in office. Right. Um, <clears throat> do I agree with that? Obviously not. But the next person in, they have to speak against the system that they all benefit from. I am not the biggest Obama. I'm a fan. Um, was good while he was there, um, but we've had one black president in the history of presidents in the United States. We haven't had an Asian man, haven't had a woman. It's been all white men. Once again, it's, it's the system, man. It's a systematic thing. Uh, the, the system. That's that's the first thing. There has to be changes. There has to be more affirmative action, which. You know when you're applying for a job and like towards the end the company is like we're equal and <laughs> equal opportunity company. I'm like uh, probably nah. not. I'm gonna check this shit anyway so you can take my application. Um, companies and things collusion with banks that are in collusion with uh, the judicial system. All this has to get changed. That's another thing we didn't touch on, although it's kind of implied. The judicial system doesn't At benefit all. us. LJ, if I get arrested, I said this in my recent, one of my recent wave report uh, episodes, if I get arrested, my public defender is probably white. The judge is probably white. The jury who's going to convict me is probably white. The only people who are, who look, look like me looking at me waiting to get sentenced. So what's, what's the probability of me going free, having the right to a fair trial? Right. That I don't have a right. And that's all, I hate to reiterate this, fellas. It's all a system thing. Yeah. It doesn't speak against the system. 
we'll keep having the same system and we'll keep having the same issues for our kids that are coming up for the next generation, our nieces and nephews, they'll experience the same thing because you just have, you just switching out characters in the same system. That's all you're doing. The system has to, and that that's, we can bring awareness to it, but that's top down. They have to know that this is an issue within fuck whatever the fuck is going on in there. It's not working for the majority of people out here. Uh, why is it? Why do people make it so hard to vote? Obviously, it's important. So you wouldn't make it that hard if it wasn't that important. Now you do have your right to not vote. You do. You can have the right not to. Um, but we put these people in office, directly, and we have to put people in office who are going to speak and try to make a change against the system. If not, uh, us three who are relatively around, we're around the same age, going to be 80 years old, and we're going to be like, hey, man, it's the same democratic representative democracy that's in place that don't benefit anybody. And uh, we shouldn't have to live like that, man. We should have to live like that. Absolutely. Yeah, man, honestly, I, I, I think when it comes to them polls and whatnot, we honestly have to, uh, I think we got to start doing some background checks, bro. Well, like some research, uh, I know a lot of people do do their research before they got there, but a lot of people, and especially now in the media era, now they look at a couple swaggy speeches or some some compilation, some things that make them feel good or uh, confirm their biases, and they go vote for that person. And they ain't do no real research, you right. know what I'm saying, on, on the things um, that this person, the, the, the values and uh, policies that uh, he or she stood on, you know what I'm saying, things of that nature, on fuck with Joe Biden straight, like that. But a lot of people do, though. Why? 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 Because, you know what I'm saying, he's on the side of the fence that confirms their bias, you know what I mean? But they don't know nothing about, oh boy, you know what I mean? So, like, when we start doing more research and whatnot, we can get the proper people in the places where we need them to be to affect the change systematically, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think a lot of our people overlook that doing research and digging in on, on the people that they're about to check off. There's so many people that are just so lazy when it comes to doing that, that research. So maybe watch a debate. They'll watch the, the little commercials and that's all they need to see. Um, and, 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 you know, we could even talk about the church. So as far as my experience of the church, a lot of, a lot of individuals in the church, it just does this, individual support oppose the LGBT community and abortion and if, if my box and my votes for you and that's all a lot of church people get into and um it's just, I don't know it's just I, I just can't stand that train of thought if you're if you want somebody to lead the country mm -hmm. you want to do that research like I wouldn't yeah. you know if I ran a corporation and I wanted somebody uh, to, to, to work under me, then I would do my diligence yes. to s make sure that they were capable of doing that. But why don't a large majority do that for the presidency? But you know, but you know, you know what it is, though? It's society, bro. It's the society yeah. that we live in. The, the, um, we, we, we're, enamored of, we're enamored with sensationalism. You know what I'm saying? Anything that has... It's, it's polarizing. We with it. We want to mm -hmm. be in that conversation. We want to be on the scene. We want to be talking about what everybody's talking about and miss right. everything that we need to be looking at. Misdirection right. is misdirection is is huge. We right. fall for the open you do in because we want to be with it. You know what's what's being talked about. What where the crowd is. That's what we you know, and that's a dumbass yeah. mindset that our society has. Yeah, was yeah. popular. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, man. We got that herd. It's that herd mentality, man. It's that herd crazy. mentality, bro. Yeah, man. And uh you're right, man. Distraction. Uh, you know, we a lot of us are sports fans. There's no reason we sh we we should know Kobe stats from two thousand and four and not know who's running who's running for local governor and stuff like that. That has That's a direct cool. effect on our lives. Uh yeah. but yeah, man. And then, you know, we live in the age of the cult of popularity, man. Whoever's popular, that's who people go with. They could be lying. They could be lying. They'd be like, well, well it's Jay-Z or it's, it's whomever it is. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to ride with them. 
I don't agree, and I think it affects people in a uh, largely negative way. Jill uh, Jonah, when you think for yourself, even if it's against the, the popular, it's against the general consensus, people think you're crazy. But more of us should think for ourselves <laughs> instead of grasping for opinions from um, other people who are probably less informed than you are, to be honest with you. A lot of the majority of people look forward to say something uh, for them so they can agree with them. A lot of them are informed. And uh, uninformed, what is that going to make you in the long run? Uh, and then their vote don't count more than your vote does. You know, it's, it's cast it the same. Yeah. They may have more and reach more people than you can at, you know, at one time. But when you go, you sit down and you vote one vote. And I think we should all look at things like that. Um, but that's hard. You've been conditioned since you were younger to, to follow what everybody else is doing. It is difficult to just all of a sudden change your mind and um, start thinking for yourself. I'm not a big Joe Biden fan either. Uh, and we we had good candidates. We had other great candidates. But once again, people just like, you know, we're just going to go with Joe. That's what we know. We just it's going to go with Joe. Well, there were more qualified people who could have right. sparked a different change and sent us in another direction. They thought about yeah. that. They, they thought about the uh, the Obama and Joe Biden memes. <laughs> how Joe Biden yeah. looked in the memes. They yeah. remembered that. Uh, yeah. That's exactly what I was about to say, man. Like, the, the end of, uh, of Obama's presidency, everybody really loved us in those last couple of months. And, and, and I think this is exactly what people are gravitating towards that. Okay. Um, but I wanted to, to ask you guys, um, Trey Lieber's uh, wife and son, they had went to a protest here in, in, in St. Pete. And, um, and their son, a uh, six or seven year old, I believe, uh, seemed sad. You guys might, I don't know if he, he told you guys, but he just seemed upset. And uh, somebody that was there at the protest had asked what, and he, you know, basically said, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said, I'm scared of America. Mm -hmm. um, so he's such a young, innocent person. Um, I want to ask you guys to, to to share with the audience what it was Black men in America. YG? Uh, for me, um, it, it was rough. Um, Number one, you got to think about most of us, you know, like me and most of my friends I grew up with didn't have a father in the crib. You know, so it's a lot of things that we didn't learn that we had to go bump our head and learn on our own. You get a little older, you get a little bigger, develop a little muscle, facial hair, and now we look threatening, you know, uh, just insecure. Um, <clears throat> and for me personally, uh, excuse me, my ass was bothering with me. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, like for me, I, my first run in with negative run in, and with the pro 10 years old, I was 19 and I was in Sulphur Springs. If you know anything about Tampa, you know about Sulphur Springs, you know the area. I ain't gonna say too much. <laughs> um, <laughs> me and my cousin Corey was, was, coming across the street, coming from the store, and pull up, they, the cops get out, waving guns. I'm dropping my drinks. I'm like, oh, hey, hey, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? I don't know what's happening. Cop body slam me, boom me, on the hood of the car. It's hot as fuck. I am in Florida, as hell. I'm on my, my face is on the car. Mail with dreadlocks as you know i had dreads and if you know anything about the particular area i was in everybody had dreads what kind yeah, of description sure. is that you know what i mean in this yeah. particular neighborhood for me honestly is is it's been filled with disappointment it's been filled with misunderstanding it's been filled with um um hell of a lot of profiling uh, the, the 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 snide comments and remarks I had to endure when I was in the fucking military. Uh, 
from little privileged ass white kids who just got out of fucking uh, West Westgate or some shit came in as a uh, butter boy ass making money, don't know shit about life, but think he can lead some men. The black jokes, you know what I'm saying? The shit that the underlining things that people. It, it, it looks funny or it sounds funny at first, but there's these undertones that let me know you live this way. The stereotypes that's been slung, slung my way, uh, etc. Like, bro, it, it's, 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 it's filled with uh, things that are toughing you up or eat you alive. It depends on, on who you are. Um, so for me, man, honestly, I just learned how to maneuver in this this bitch ass country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so LJ, y'all can hear me? Yeah. Um, me and Jonah come from essentially the same place. I mean, like quite literally come from the yeah, same place. Across the street. Uh I grew up um a lot of I was misinformed. Uh I was I was sad as Jonah mentioned. I was very unaware of my surroundings growing up. Um, I had a difficult time with identifying who I was and my place in the world. Um, But I I did always have questions, as y'all know I'm big questions about where I'm from, why was white where I was from? I mean, everywhere I go, everybody's the same. And then no one has any money. You know, people 50, 60, 70, they're still here, where I'm growing up at. No one went anywhere, no one, like, I didn't think there was a whole other world outside of my projects. Um, and that's that's not good when you're going into, like, the workplace, or you're going to school, or you're going to the military. You don't. You, your mind is is set on. All I know is where I'm from. I didn't know how to live because all I was I was brought up on survival. Um, as a young black man, profiling came at a gauge from the police. Um, I have a general view. I don't think most white people like black people. From my experiences, from American history, um, personal ex- people who look like me, it just seems like the majority of them don't like us. Uh, maybe to no fault of their own. If if you're six years old right now and you're in a racist household, they're going to raise you to think that black people are a threat and that black people um, don't deserve the same things that you deserve in life. Of course, you know, that great people, great white people who look like you, um, who kind of showed me that things aren't as bad as I believe they were. And don't get me wrong, I grew up, it was just my mom, for the most part, my biological father was in prison. My mom used to raise me like, white people aren't, you stay away. and. Because when you go in school, you meet different people, you know, you and, you know, from where we from, they try to bust us in diversity so that there isn't like a bunch of black people in the school. Yeah. And so I'm seeing white people. I'm like, they're cool. You know what I'm saying? But in my mind, I'm like, my mom told me to stay away. My auntie and my uncle told me they're not good. But I'm in school interacting with them. I'm like, they're this ain't cool. Um, so it, it it was confusing for a while. As I be, um, I got profiled some more. Uh, even when I started getting my education and stuff, it's it's LJ is so crazy, man. Cause my my degree is in English literature, so when I would go in classes, I would pretty much be the only black. It'd be a bunch of bunch of white women. They'd be like, are you in? The, I had somebody tell me one time, like, you sure you're in the right class? Wow. And I need. I'm I'm like, I'm probably more sure than you are. You're probably going to change majors. I'm probably more sure than, than, than you are. But when, when people say things like that, it's just that expectation that it's almost like you don't really belong here. 
And uh, that can be defeating. As tough as we want to make ourselves seem a strong person, some things do hurt. And you have to sit back like, dang, man, that's because it's just, it's a reminder of a false reality that you used to live in. And um, to this day, man, um, I am, I am, um, I feel a lot of despair. I'm not the most optimistic person to begin with because history does repeat itself. Just for the sake of the next generation, I have to be hopeful that things will change for them. Our generation may not be able to see it, and that's fine. Um, but people act, man. And I, I've, I've seen it a thousand times over, man. I know and it's going on, LJ, that something will happen. Something will happen. I, I, I can say that. I think something will happen. What will it be and for how long? I cannot say. I don't think anybody can. As you know, or will it be that, enough? That's, the, that, that's, that's a great question. I think that's the question of the day. Will it be enough? And that's, that's for us to see, man. Because from if we just go off of history, if we go off what the resume says, it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be right. enough. Uh, but I, I don't want to say that I want to be negative. I'm just going off of what I, I what I know, what all of us know. Uh, I hope it changes, man. Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> one thing I, uh, one thing I, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping is um, things change. Let's say years from now, the playing field levels out. Shit becomes equal. Um, I pray that it's not those people, you know, that look like me, black people, that wants more still, you know, that wants to do to them and done to us, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like that revenge thing. Mm. Um, that's once you start getting a little power or, or, or you know, you get start getting your foot in start feeling yourself, you know, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that's one that's not happened that, you know, in the future, you know, in this place that we all hope that that does not happen, man, because that can get real ugly and that can be, that can set us back yes, sir. from all the problems yes, that, that, that comes across. Yeah. A platform like this, having us speak on your platform, this is definitely helpful, man. You know, I can't tell you enough how helpful it is just to have black men spread the word, speak freely. You know, you didn't give us any restraints like "don't say this, don't say this." You're not even like that. <laughs> so he's no, no, no. uh, just like, "Come on here and speak your mind." And this is definitely therapeutic for me. Uh, I'm sure it is for Jonah because as us as black men outside of social media, people listen to us, take right. us seriously. So I, I appreciate this a lot, brother. No, I, I wanted to ask you guys, because like, like we've already discussed, it does seem as white people are becoming receptive and, and want to be, want to be allies. So what can we as white people do to be just that? Like, what can we do to help? Continue, continue uh, from, from what I've been seeing, this trend that I've been seeing of people speaking out, continue to speak, have these conversations around, not a, not just uh, black people when, you know, it's, it's convenient to make yourself seem like you're not a racist or whatever shit. Like talk to your homies, talk to your family, have them conversations, talk to your kids. And, and let's, let's, you know, that's when it's real. Right. When you can do something, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty much, man, when you can do the right thing when no one's looking. That's right. So when you don't have me, when there's not a whole bunch of black people in your, in your section, that's when it's to talk about the real issue. Talk about it with the people that look like you. You know what I'm saying? Continue to um, stand on the side of, 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 of righteousness, man. That's it. I agree with Jonah. To piggyback off what he said. Thanks. One, I think it's important for, for white people to listen to how we feel. 
and to listen to our anger and the things experienced over time to just listen to us man because we haven't been listened to you know we've been saying Martin Luther King was saying the same shit Malcolm X even saying even before them the yeah. people who were with them during the civil rights era people after them listen to us man and um I think it's important secondly for white people to just admit that they do benefit from uh the system and that there is they do have a certain privilege that we don't have and sometimes when i'm speaking to white people they act like it doesn't exist and, and uh we can't get anywhere if you don't admit there's a problem man. right uh, so those are the two things admitting that there is a, there's a problem and just listen to us man we're not making things up out of thin air you know we're not pulling this out of, we're, we're speaking from real life firsthand experience um, whether it's with systemic racism or whether it's with uh, law enforcement. Just just listen to us and continue uh, to be an advocate uh, for Black Lives Matter. That's men and women. You know, I want to make that, make that very clear. Not just men, men and women and children. So just keep listening to us, man. Hey, LJ, you, you're, you're a leader in that forefront, man. I think you're doing, you're doing the right thing and you're taking uh, to make sure that we're heard. Yeah. Thank you, man. Um, I think just in having conversations, especially recently with uh, with white, uh, have the opposing view, um, I genuinely, it seems as if they don't believe that they're racist because in their mind, a race is just is a KKK member uh, with, you know, with, with the hood, you know, and, and that's what their mind um, and 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 they don't realize that there are rate. What's the right word? There are there are like bits of racism in them, and and and, and right. what what is what is it that 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 do you guys think? Um, because it seems to me as if like I was having a conversation with you and. Um, I had shared something on Facebook and, and they're like, well, what, well, me, mm -hmm. bitch, it's not about you. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like that, it just seems about me, like my, 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 my kids, you know, I give, I give something to my four-year-old, the, the three-year-old, like, well, what about me? And, um, like on their birthday, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't, what, what, what would you guys say to that? I, I can't speak to it too much, my Brother, mm -hmm. I don't have nothing to say to them fuck boys. <laughs> hey, okay. typical J Jonah, Jonah, <laughs> I would expect nothing less. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> nothing less. Huh? What I would say, racism today is is uh, it's more covert now. It's more covert. It's not KKK, uh, F U N word with the ER at the end. It's not always like that anymore. Um, I, I would have them sit down and talk to uh, somebody like, somebody who, hard as Jonah said, because even if you sit down with them, it's not a guarantee that they'll listen or accept anything that you're saying. But I still think people should try. Someone who doesn't have any, doesn't come from your background, looks nothing like you, has a completely different cultural experience growing up in America than you, um, so that they can open your eyes. So you may not get it or susceptible to seeing where they're coming from down the line. That may or may not happen, uh, but the station, conversations have to be had in an intimate and honest manner. And that's that's another thing, you know, we could, Touch on that. It's a lot of dishonest people, um, as far on both sides. There's a lot of dishonest uh, white, people. and there's a lot of dishonest white people in power, um, who kind of know that they benefit from a long lineage of and then. There are there are a few uh, black people who are who kind of 
and it's not a lot, it's not the majority, but there are black people who I think with everything that's going on, you know, like with the looters and like the pro like they're out for self. They're not are in it for, for real. Mm-hmm. They just they just they're just in it and I don't I don't appreciate that, man. Because if you're gonna be real, be real all the way. Come on, man. I know I know we're all skin tone black and we all on the same side, but all of us don't have gotta address that as well. You know what you know the age old thing, man, all, all skin folk ain't kin folk. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. And that's and that's, that's absolutely Listen, bro. I, I I'm not the one that can be uh, in that position to to you know erase it straight up. We sit on on, on, the, on the table and, and we we try, you know hash things out. I'm not the one for that. Yeah, you're kind of violent. You know, uh, I wouldn't know. You know, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's 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 that's the beautiful thing about having a world full of different people, different personalities. And the beautiful thing about the black community that we're so diverse, we have people who can do that. You know what I'm saying? Who can sit there and have an intelligent conversation with somebody who don't really give a fuck about them at all and possibly sway them, but more than likely won't. But, you know, it's a possibility. I'm the base. It's people that live to try to change the minds of people. You know, me personally, I'm, I'm, I'm not one to try to do that anymore. I kind of try to live as straight up and down as I can, flaws and all, and kind of own it and show that genuine consistency in my life in, 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 in hopes that it permeates through the people around me, you know, right. um, you know, whether that be white, black, you know, you know what I'm saying? I just, I want that love to be shown to everybody, man, and I try to walk through that. So I don't think it's nothing I can say to a racist person that, that you know, that can change their mind, you know. I think some shit got to hit home for them, and they got to be real. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that that's really the only way they got to hit rock bottom. Yeah. I um, you know, I want to get before we books that I always suggest to people to read, uh, you know, regarding this matter is White Fragility and the New Jim mm-hmm. Crow. Are there any other? books or maybe you know whatever um that people can watch listen to read um to help educate themselves uh regarding the, this this thing at this time yeah man checking out checking out anything on jim crow is good is is, is really good yeah man. um i think do, do some history do some history lessons check mm-hmm. out other movements you know um, not just the civil rights movement there was things before then right. Uh, I mean, read up on Marcus Go, you know, read up on, you know, check out all types of other shit. And um, because uh, I think once we're in tune with the, with the past, we can know how to move for in the future and uh, build leaders. So, you know, I would like that. I agree uh, with White for, You know, ironically, I just gave that book to somebody. I just gave that really? book to somebody, man. White Fragility, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, the new Jim Crow is definitely my God. That's definitely I'll I'll recommend that first. The new Jim Crow man. Mm-hmm. Uh, mass incarceration is a very real. We're gonna have some conversations, LG. Let's put it that way. That that those books are definitely a good place to start. Sure. Um, I think uh, it's so many books, man. <laughs> I think. You know Malcolm X autobiography, but I but not the first one. See, people the Alex Haley version is people the one people run to, but there was one that was put out later by Manny Mirable. It's kind of a more in depth, um, honest look at Malcolm X. I mean that stamp from the beginning. Um, anything written by Howard Zinn, who's a white man of how you know we kind of built america uh but yeah but to start off i know you know reading isn't a big thing with if you just want to start somewhere definitely white fragility and definitely the new jim crow to get you a kind of foundation and then you can start from there there's a there's a lot of literature um out there for people to respond to and then not even books you you can read some scholarly articles written by people um yeah. that'll definitely help as well 
you know, I know some people aren't long winded like that. So yeah. you, can, you can check out those things. But yeah. Hey right, guys, look, I appreciate y'all for coming on and, and having this discussion with me. I think it was, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's and uh, this, uh, you know, for, for those in the audience is in the last one, there will be another episode tomorrow, part two. Uh, which will be uh, equally as uh, so Jonah, Tremonte, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Thank you guys so much for coming on and uh, sharing y'all's hearts. I really, anything uh, you guys want to say before we get out of here? I love, please stay safe. Um, pray as much as you can. You don't got to be religious. Uh, take care of one another and uh, stand on the righteousness side, man. Stay on the side of righteousness, man, and just keep fighting. Uh, Colin Kaepernick is a legend, officially. <laughs> <laughs> See y'all next time. Peace. Peace.